Well, big hello to everyone out there. My name's Steve Judge. I'm the host of the Sunday session. Um, today's show, we've got three highly respected non-league managers with us. The Jimmy Dean from Peterborough Sports, the Hugo Langton from Lewis FC, and John McGrath from Michelover Sports. Um, before I fully introduce you to the three guys, I just want to sort of share with you the format for this e for this for today's show. So today, um, the opportunity for you to sort of fire in your questions to the guys um, to help you with those questions. These will be the four main areas that we'll be looking at. Uh, so as we go through the challenges and, approach, and approaches that they'll be taking to the new season, we're looking uh, initially with the sort of recruitment and finances side and how that may have been affected by COVID or they're still operating at the same level they were last season. Um, all three guys sort of back to full training yesterday so we'll find out how that went and what their plans are for the rest of this kind of stretched out pre-season in terms of when they're having friendlies how they're sort of graduating gradually sort of increasing the intensity of their training sessions um thirdly we're looking at the sort of the guidelines <laughs> that have been issued by the fa and the government and sort of where that has where they sort of see that pitching the player welfare but also not only with covid but in terms of player fitness injury risks with players coming back after such a long layoff. And then finally, we'll look at you know, what the match days themselves are going to look like once the season begins, I believe, September 17 for everyone. Um, so before we get there, let me uh, take that off the screen and start introducing you to the guys. So first of all, sort of a big hello to Jimmy Dean. Jimmy, how are you? Hey, bad, Steve. How are you, mate? Yeah, yeah. Very good. Very good, mate. It's good to have you with us. Um, yeah. It's the first one I've ever done, so go easy on me. Right, well, we'll give you a nice, soft, gentle introduction then, and just basically just tell us a little bit of your football background and pathway leading up to your current position at Peterborough Sports. Um, as, a, as a player, you know, I played a lot of my football around the, the level that we're at now, really, um, locally, and then a little bit further afield, you know. Um, so nothing special there. As a manager, I took over... Peter Sports is my first job. I took over five years ago um, at Step Six, which is obviously you know, the bottom, the bottom league in in the pyramid. Um, we won that. We got promoted. Um, the year after, we had a back-to-back -back promotions. We then tailed off for a year at Step Four. We we finished twelfth, and then we then won that the following year and went up to Step Three, and then. You know, we got a good, a fair bit of publicity last year because obviously we was doing really well. We didn't expect it, but we was top of the league. Um, I'd say publicity for the wrong reasons because, um, you know, we got null and voided when we was in a, a good position. To have a real tilt at getting an automatic promotion. And, you know, if we hadn't got that, we certainly would have got the playoffs. So, um, yeah, that's, that's uh, my four years, no, five years in charge and I'm a PSL and I'm, I'm going for my six, starting my sixth season with them now. So, you know, lots of excitement, but in terms of moving around, pretty boring. No, no, sounds uh, exciting times to me, Jimmy. Um, Hugo, how are you? I'm very well, Steve. How are you? You okay? Yes, yes. All good. good. All good this Sunday. Um, yes, yeah, so a similar sort of introduction for yourself, just your sort of sure. background leading up to your, your role with Lewis. Yeah, sure. Um, as a player, I had to retire. I was 20, I think. Horrible times. But anyway, there you go. I um, uh, started off, I, I suppose, uh, right down the bottom of the club called Rustall, right down in step six, uh, similar to what Jimmy spoke about. From there, over the last 15 years, I've been, I've been everywhere, really. Um, notably, probably more so, uh, I joined Bromley in 2013 as the first team coach there. Uh, I had two seasons there, which we, we won the National League South. I then moved to Eastbourne Borough, where I held a number of different roles. Some at the Saturday. Do you know what? At one point, I was interim manager, assistant manager, first team coach, academy manager, academy coach, under eighteen manager, <laughs> and under eighteen coach. I was all those roles at once. You know, um, when I left Eastbourne, I went, I went to Welling for a bit. I actually then sort of changed what I did for a bit. I worked for Bristol Rovers for a season as their opposition scout, which was great because I travelled the country and watched all the upcoming opponents. Then I went back to Welling 
<laughs> and that didn't work out too well. I left there in January and um, I had a phone call in February from Lewis, a uh, bit of an SOS call really. Uh, I've known the chairman a long time. They weren't in a great position. They'd lost seven games in a row. They were right at the wrong end of the table. So it was, uh, the call basically said, uh, would you put your cape on and come and try and keep us up? And just before lockdown, we were just starting to be where I wanted us to be. We're starting to win. Um, and then we went into lockdown and here we are now. So that's what led me to Lewis. Yeah, brilliant. Cheers, Hugo. Um, finally, John, John McGrath, good to have you with us. Hey, Steve, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, really good, John. Really good. good. Um, yeah, wonder if you could tell us, yeah, similar story for yourself, your, your pathway leading you to where you are now with Michelova. Yeah, my, uh, my career started, I suppose, I, I came over from Ireland when I was 18. Um, always thought I, I was too old because anybody who was, who was good enough in Ireland at the time was, was leaving to go over at, you know, 15 and 16 years of age. And I, I, um, I was a bit of a late developer. Um, signed for Aston Villa, uh, but you know, kind of, kind of found my, you know, loved the full time training. So I had four years at Villa, uh, made my made my Premier League debut at Stamford Bridge, um, home debut against Liverpool. So you know, some some great memories. Uh, played in the Europa League with them, um, FA Cup games, and but you know, was always a, a a kind of a bit part squad player. Played a lot of reserve games under. Coaches like Kevin McDonald and Tony McAndrew, Gordon Cowns, um, and then signed with Doncaster Rovers, um, where we won we won uh, League Two in two thousand and three two thousand and four season. Um, and then had a had a couple of clubs like Kidderminster Harriers, Shrewsbury, uh, and really found my um, found my home at Burton Albion, where where um, I spent six years. Four as captain, uh, captain them into the football league. Um, you know, 250 league games in in six seasons, and um, yeah, I loved every minute of that football club. You know, you know, see where it's gone from. You know, League Two, League One, Championship, and um, then left left um, Burton Albion when I was 34. Um, signed for Alfreton Town, and um, a year at Alfreton. Uh, was injured for half of that year and uh, I ended up actually I, I was going to retire so I ended up um, you know Glenn Kirkwood and Craig Hopkins the manager of the Michelover said uh, Max you want to come and come play some games so I played a season at Michelover um, the two boys left for personal reasons the club was uh, taking a, a different route there was a new chairman coming in Don Amos and uh, they offered me the, um, the player manager role um, so I'm now beginning my sixth season as a well, I suppose as a player manager, but you know I'm 40 now, so the games have uh, the games have slowly, slowly got got less and less. Um, but um, love every minute of uh, of non-league, and um, you know I think the two boys with us here, Jimmy and Hugo, will will say it's 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 tough at times, but you know when you get it right, it's it's you know superb. Fantastic. Cheers, John. Um, guys, I think to begin with, just sort of take you back to that sort of moment in March when everything got locked down and sort of piece things together from that moment to where you are now, sort of leading up to, I believe all three of you yesterday started back full training, but we'll sort of talk about the training session itself um, a little bit later, but sort of how you've sort of dealt with, kept in contact with your players through through the lockdown period up to now. Um, I guess we'll start with you, Jimmy. And first of all, I presume you know you had the first disappointment of getting over from being in such a strong position and, and sort of having so much to look forward to in April and May. Yeah, I mean, first, just touching on John again, as someone who was a late developer, he didn't do too bad, did he? He <laughs> 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 He didn't do too bad. I mean, that's pretty impressive, man. You know, Thanks, I'm, a, I'm a massive, massive Liverpool fan, so. You know, very in awe of you for getting your debut there and, you know, fair play to you and congratulations on a fantastic career, man. Um, Jimmy, Jimmy, I was trying to chase Stephen Gerrard on the pitch for uh, for 90 minutes. It was like tracking a racehorse. Mate, he's your favourite ever player. He's your favourite ever player, so, you know, it's pretty amazing. It's fair play to you. Um, in terms of us with players, um, look, it's, it's different for every, every manager, you know. Like, obviously, we've had... 
we've had success at Peter Sports, yeah. Um, some some people have, have um, you know, they, they they have to work a bit harder with the players to keep them. But we're in a we're in an environment, I think, where we've had a you know a core of this team has been together for four years. We're in an environment where you know players have been offered a lot of money to leave and they haven't. A bit like you we were saying before we come on, John. And, um, but this break for us, yeah, I've stayed in touch. We've got a group. We all have them, don't we? I've stayed in touch, but. For me, this has been, you know, about trusting them and, and letting them have, have their break and, and deal with um, deal with their ongoing issues because it was, it's not just been daunting for managers, it's been daunting for players. It's, you know, when, when this first happens, you know, we've, we've got a little girl, a little baby, you can hear in the background. Uh, you know, she's got uh, un, undeveloped lungs, lungs at the minute. I mean, we think she's come on well, so... You know, we're worried, like we was we were scared to death, we were standing, we weren't doing it. And everyone had their own problems with that. Everyone you have to you have to leave people be to to get on with it. I weren't someone who was on it and you gotta do this, you gotta train. I mean we was gonna put some sessions on on the Zoom Zoom link whilst we thought we might be coming back still to finish the season. But that was, you know, curtailed pretty early by the FA, weren't it? They you know, they yeah. put on that. So at that point, yeah, I stayed in touch to talk to them, but when, you know, we, we get on, we get on, you know. Like I'd say we're mates sometimes out of football. In football, obviously, there's a line. They know that and I know that, but, um, you know, it wasn't something I was actively pursuing and chasing and, you know, all, all the time to, to, because they have their issues. And I also believe, normally, you work five days a week, most people, you then have to, come off a building site, come off your job and you have to go and rush away away on a Tuesday night, get back at 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. It's hard work. When boys have their break, I like to give them their break. Um, you know, obviously, if I was worried players were going to leave or we was in that situation, I could imagine it'd be quite intense. It'd be hard to get hard to get the, the line right where uh, you're, too, you're too much on and you're giving them too much or you have to stand, you know, you have to stand back and, and, and let them make their decision. But where we're at, I think we're in a good place. So I've, I've, let, I've let the boys go with it, to be honest with you. I haven't bothered. We've had the banner in the group. Liverpool winning the league has been a lot of it for me, as you can imagine. Um, but that's it, really. You know, it hasn't been an ongoing process where I'm drilling players, where I'm saying you've got to do this, you've got to train. You know, at this level, I'd hope the ones that, you know, they, they, they do something. But, you know, coming back yesterday, it's obvious... The ones, there's a little click I've got in my team, basically. The ones that I've played in and around. And then you've got the young lads, what I was talking about, who's come out of clubs and they say they're a bit more professional. And you could see it yesterday in the first pre-season training, which ones had been looking after themselves and which mm. ones got a, week, a, a, a little way to go. Um, you know, which is basically the older lads that, you know, that I've spent time with and I've played with, you know. I mean, the attitude gets better every generation, doesn't it? You know, yeah. I, I mean, even at professional level, the attitude of the young boy. It is. You read these stories, and you know, Gary Neville often talks about. There's a time Fergie kicked it in when the drinking culture stopped. Probably going to get away from that. That's one Man United had that success. Um, you know, and took over. But every generation becomes a bit more professional. I think they have a bit more knowledge. And I, you know, coming back yesterday, it showed. It showed in the players who. You know, who was at it. But this this is what we've had. You know, I, I, planned, I planned for September the 19th. I figured that I got told from someone at Posh they were starting back on September the 12th. We, so I guess we always start a week later than them. So I guess the 19th. I've got lucky. It does look like it's going to be the 19th. I planned an eight-week pre-season instead of six. Why have I done that? Because obviously we've had two extra months out. You know, we want to build into it a little bit. More football-based rather than going into six weeks of brutality like we normally would boys um yeah so that's that's where i've been at with it here's jimmy um hugo i guess it's slightly different for you that jimmy's you know he's been with a core set of lads for five years yeah. you only came into lewis in february that's right so you're, yeah. you're getting to know that group yeah How's that kind of sort of maintaining and build i presume sort of the, trying to build that relationship yeah when, I'll, I'll, knowing when the season's gonna restart or, or start again? Well, I, I did it slightly different uh, to Jimmy, probably because my situation obviously is, is different, being sort of a newer person in the door. Um, 
you know, what I did quite early on, I just, I kind of did a risk assessment with each player. I needed to know, um, what because obviously still getting to know them, who they were living with, whether there's anybody vulnerable, uh, whether they work for the NHS, whether they were elderly, whether they, people had uh, certain medical conditions. Um, so in that case, I was in a position where I could help them, support them. Uh, and some, some, players need, some players needed that, if I'm honest with you. Other things that I did was, you know, I, we obviously, like, we've all got WhatsApp groups. Ours was, like, everyone else's was quite lively. But I did things like, um, I set them, like, a challenge once a week. It might be, who can do the most press-ups in 90 seconds? Uh, and interestingly, I didn't come last, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> things like, uh, we, listen, we had a, one of the players hosted a quiz, which was decent. Uh, but what, what I did was I said to them, look, you know, when, when I went in, obviously we were in a bit of a fight. It was a bit more roll your sleeves up. The style of play was probably a little bit punchy because that's what you've got to do in those situations. You can't go in there and unnecessarily uh, sort of tiptoe your way out of a situation like that. But now we, once we realised that the season was was knocked on its head, I started to think, well, this is what I've got. This is what I want to bring in. I knew some of the players I wanted to bring in. So I decided that well, I, I made a decision what style of play we were going to play in terms of formation and things like that. And I said to the players, listen, um, do, you, do you guys want to start thinking about our formation and what we're going to do? And they all said, yeah. So I sent them games. Uh, so, for example, we're going to play uh, one, three, four, two, one in attack, right? And uh, I found teams uh, that play something similar. Belgium, for example. Whilst Belgium are elite, and we're not, obviously. Uh, I sent them some Belgium games. And I just said to them, listen, uh, it's like a tactical quiz. Look look uh, at what your position would be. What do you do in possession, out of possession, the transitions between the two? So I kind of used the time quite a lot to, in terms of like tactical training. So it just meant then yesterday when we came into training, the boys kind of already understood a lot of what was going to start in terms of the tactical information yesterday and going forward over the next seven, eight weeks. You know? So I kind of try to use that to my advantage a little bit. Uh, and it, and it, so far it seems to be working. They all wanted to do it. I think like what Jimmy said, I've got, I've got a lot of young players. I've promoted four lads from my under 18. So we've all got a hell of a lot of potential and stuff. But they, they just literally, from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to bed, all they do and think about is football. So having players like that, and I've got players that have got real, in terms of my recruitment, have got real fire in their bellies. They've got points to prove. They've been released by clubs whatever it might be, you know, they've had a couple of hard knocks. They've all got, they've all got some sort of fire in their belly. And that's where I've kind of tried to recruit, particularly from outside as well, players that have got points to prove. You know, I think Willstone last season, like they, they were brilliant because the manager, Dean Brennan, he, I know he, he brought his squad in together and you could look at them going, they were all a bunch of misfits, players that had all failed the season before at, at that level. And people had question marks over them. And he brought them all in together and went, go on then. Go on, show everyone who you are. And they were brilliant, you know. So, um, obviously, my, so, so really to recap, yeah, I've been a little bit different to Jimmy. But my circumstance has been, been massively different. And, uh, you know, we've done four weeks of social distance training just on a Saturday. And then, obviously, we've got eight weeks. And... Um, you know, it's got to be gradual. Everyone's a lot. People's football fitness is very, very low. Players getting out of breath very quickly. I'm sure you guys recognised that yesterday in your sessions. Getting out of breath really, really quickly. You know, so it's so important now. And I think we're going to talk about player welfare later. That it's going to be, it's got to be so gradual and we've got to look after them. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. Cheers, Hugo. Um, John, sort of how was uh, that period sort of, from March through April, May, June, and to where you are now at the end of July. Yeah, we, we um, obviously the season curtails, you know, beginning of March and the, the league, the FA and the leagues acted really quickly to, to, to finish our, our seasons. You know, it, it, was, it was done and dusted with, with, you know, no promotions, no relegations, uh, which, which, you know, I, it, I think, you know, we should have waited and seen what 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 the Premier League were doing, the the EFL were doing, the the, the national conference were doing. But uh, you know, the powers of be acted, and 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 then then you kind of you, you kind of set your stall out and say, right, you know, where are we going to go? F you know, in 
the new season, you know, you know, will there be a football club there for us to go back to because of because of corona, you know, because it's coronavirus, you know, it, you know, clubs have been affected, business have been affected. Um, but you know, I've got a good chairman uh, behind me, um, and we sat down and um, and we made a plan initially that look, you know, we got to look after the football club. Um, he, they've done things, the club have done things like driving movies, social distance driving movies, where where you know it, it brings revenue in. Um, you know our our big fixture for preseason, you know, would be Burton Albion, Derby County. Um, you know they can't happen because paying spectators can't come in until until the fifth of September. So you know we didn't have a definitive date to set those games. Um, I then lost a lot of my players um, because my budget was was not going to go up. It was actually going to come down. I was told, you know, look, it, it you know, whoever's whoever's coming in, whoever's going out. Um, the money's got to be less, um, and then we found. I found myself taking phone calls from players, saying, "Look, I've been offered X amount elsewhere. Can you match it?" I said, "I can't." Yeah, but Gaffer, you know, we want to stay. I said, well, "Look, if it's financially there, are things you want to go and you know, you know, what Jimmy says, players go through a lot. You know, you know, we've had a um, you know one of our players who's had his wedding cancelled for the second time in two years." Um, so, and he's getting married next year, and he's like, "Well, you know, I need the money for this." Somebody might have lost their jobs, so it, it, it's just different circumstances. Um, but I was lucky enough to do a lot of my recruitment uh, October, November time. I'd, I'd, I'd earmarked a lot of um, players from the league below, so we 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 were going to go young, hungry, athletic. Anyway, um, we're a team that likes to play football, sometimes to our detriment, but. You know that's that's how I want to play. Um, we play off from the back, and uh, yeah, we. I put the onus on the players. I said, look, you got to come back in some decent shape and uh, uh, and do a bit yourself over lockdown. Um, but then I left it to them. We had our little WhatsApp uh, chats, like all the boys, you know, have said, and um, our physio um, put a program together for the month of June. So from the first of June to the to the to the end of June, he put a, a little program together for the boys to do, and then we were we, we were back. But when we train, we don't you know we don't run around cones, run around tracks, run up hills. I get access to the boys Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday for a couple of hours each night. So I would rather work on tactical, technical stuff, stuff that we can affect on a Saturday. So like Hugo was saying, formations. Where you stand in relation to where the ball it the ball is, counter attacking. If we get counter attacked, what happens there? Um, I've got a very very good first team coach and assistant manager, uh, both ex players, who who know the game inside out. Um, and yeah, so you know we've we've lost seven. We we've lost six to all the clubs. One's uh, one is a young kid who's um, who's moved to Coventry City. He's actually my son. My son's uh, just signed for Coventry City on a on a on a two year pro deal. He's he was at Ibrox yesterday um, in the first team squad. So you know we we've lost seven of our our players, but we've brought four in. Um, and like I was telling Jimmy and Hugo, we've got a full time academy, so um, we've got some good young talent coming from there as well. So that's that's where we're at. Um, our pre season program has been altered slightly. Um, you know. We're playing a lot of our games away from home because there's just no point in opening the home game for the home ground for for a fixture unless it's Derby County and Burton Albion um, because they're our big ones. So um, we play a lot of Tuesdays, Saturdays, and then we'll just try and keep the lads ticking over as we go along. And um, God knows what's going to happen when the season starts on the 19th. You know, are we going to have a break, Christmas break? Is there going to be a spike? Um, but fingers crossed, we get back to some form of normality and um, you know have a good, you know, thirty-eight week season. Yes, John. Yeah, I think we saw that first step back to normality. Then was probably yesterday, sort of having the full, the full training. Um, I don't know whether go back to Hugo. Um, I don't know whether sort of ahead of your session yesterday, did you have any distancing sessions before? The guys came back, and was that all yeah. mandatory, or was that up to the guys to turn up? As yeah, they... no, it wasn't. It wasn't compulsory. I probably had eighty percent 
in I did four Saturdays. Uh, I actually did mornings in Louis and I did the afternoon in London initially, uh, just to save the boys that are more London based, um, having to travel too much. But then, do you know what? We we made a decision. I've got a lovely. I'm very lucky. I've got a, an amazing training pitch down at Louis behind the stadium, and the boys were like. That to be fair, they said, "Can we come and do it down there?" I said, "That's fine," you know. So we just switched it. But it was there was a totally different challenge because it's whilst you're doing social distance training, it's not quite football because you can't tackle, you can't press, you can't mm. head, you can't. So it was close to it without it being the real thing. But the players understood that because it was that or nothing, uh, and they wanted to, to come in and do stuff. So so we did four Saturdays of that on Tuesdays. Uh, I made myself available to some players if they wanted to do something. So I, had, you know, I live here. I live in Tunbridge, right near Tunbridge Angels Football Club, and next to it there's uh, some big pitches and stuff. There's a big open area, and I said, look, if anyone wants to to use me on a Tuesday, so some players would use me on a Tuesday just to do a few bits off their own back, which was great. And uh, but now, as of yesterday, we'll go Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday, throughout. So, uh, mm. like uh, John was saying, in terms of the fixtures, you know, it's tough because. Um, you know, you, you, your pro clubs are the are the important fixtures, aren't they, guys? Because that's where yeah. your revenue comes from. But we yeah. can't have it. So, uh, like I've got Crawley Town coming. We'll probably still play the game, if I'm honest with you, because you know it's about also relationship building with Crawley as well. You know, I mm. I know their assistant manager well. My assistant knows the Crawley manager well. So it's just about make, building that relationship as well. Just to, yeah. to like loan players and things like that. You know, or, you know things that we can help each other with. Uh, but yeah, other than that, we're we're playing like well, I think we're playing Eastbourne Borough and Tunbridge Angels. Everybody else will be from a little bit below. But we probably I'm not going to do too much on Tuesdays initially. I think we're just going to play mostly Saturday. Once we get into September, I'll add a little bit extra. I think because you know it's a it's important. I think that you know we we don't overload the players. You know, in terms of um, you know fatigue. I think we've got to give them opportunities to recover, not just between sessions, but also when they play. Uh, because if they accumulate fatigue, then they're going to get injured. And you know, we, we all pay our players whatever we can. But what I don't want is to have a thousand pounds worth of players sitting in the stand. You know, and if that happens, that's that's my fault. That's on me. It's on nobody else. You know, so my players understand this as well, and it's it's very it's going to have to be very very gradual build up. I've even told the players that not this week, the next week. So week two of proper pre-season, you're going to all turn around to me and feel that you're not doing enough. But that's where I'm going to have to make sure that I manage them, educate them, make them sure they understand um, about you know the, the recovery times between everything that we do. Um, so it's going to be it's a it's a totally different challenge. Um, you know, I'm sure the other two guys will find this as well. You know it's. You know, the most important thing I think that we have at our disposal, fellas, is, is our eyes, you know, where we can see where people are tiring uh, and to be able to monitor what players are doing, you know, in terms they've got to be honest with us, what they're doing outside of football. So I, I said to them at the end of the session yesterday, you know, I said, listen, you know, I, I know you guys have been doing some paying these one-to-one -one coaches. I said, that's admirable, it's great, but now now you need to stop it, you know, because... So like yesterday, for example, was a restart, the, what I call a restart the engine. Tuesday night, we'll do a football fitness night within the context of 11 v 11. Like John mentioned there, I'm not one for running around pitches, up and down sand dunes, long distance stuff. I, I don't see the point of it. I think it was Mourinho yeah. who said that to be a good piano player, you play the piano, you don't run around the piano. Yeah. You know? Thursday then will be a recovery stroke tactical night. Then Saturday we'll go... Uh, probably a little bit of, of, of everything. But every, every session, everything that I do, every exercise, depending, doesn't matter what night it is, is all about our playing style and the tactical, so the tactical element of in possession, out possession, and the transitions to the two. I don't do anything else. I don't do rondos or anything like that. I just don't do them. My choice, I just personally think I'm going off track a little bit here. Be interested to hear what you two think of them. But I've noticed that in rondos, Players will, players will look down all the time. Nobody checks the shoulders. So I've been them. I don't know what you two think about that. but That's an interesting point. Well, Jimmy, uh, I'll let you uh, jump in there. There's obviously lots there to, to pick up from what Hugo said. Um, I don't know if I take you back to 
yesterday though and, and your own observations of your your squad sort of having them all together for the first time and sort of what the challenges you probably thought were you'd have to face with them and whether that has played out or there's other things that you've picked up on yeah well look you know i'm listening to the guys there and obviously you know he goes sending videos about how he wants them to play and it goes back to um it goes back to where he's at with these boys and where i'm at with my boys you know, I'm five years in. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, it's totally different, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I mean. I'm five years in. Like, you know, I think, I mean, anyone, I mean, I've, I've, to give you insight, I've lost one player and I've bought him three. You know, a couple of them are playing, are playing for, uh, playing for a deal as well. Do you know what I mean? So the fundamentals of what we do, you know, it's, it's, they're, they're, they're all the same. You know, like we're high intensity. We want to get the ball back quickly. Um, we want to, the, the, the formation, I mean, I don't like to give too much away, and I don't think I'll do it today, but the formation we play is, um, you know, it's attacking and um, it's stuff we've worked on for years. Do you understand what I mean? This is stuff, yeah. this is stuff we've done for years, um, which is why, you know, like if I was a new manager at a club or I was going through a turnover players like John is, you know, I would have done things differently. Do you know what I mean? But where we're at now, like the fundamentals of, of 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 what we do, they're going to be the same. You know, like I remember talking to a manager last year, um, you know, at Russia, and like he watched the video of us, you know, a manager who gave him the video of us, and you know, I just sat there before the game, and I just, you know, like I thought, I just said, like, well, we 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 ain't going to change. It was it was the top of the table, top of the table. Um, oh, sorry about my little daughter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, you know, and I sat there and I told him, I was like, I am, I am into the kidology. I'm not into, like, you know, what you see is what you're going to get. You know, it's up to you to stop us. Do you know what I mean? That's where I'm at. And that's, that's a lot. I'm, I mean, I was told yesterday I can have a scout this year. So, you know, I think I deal very well with the scout report and it'll give us more opportunity to do things differently um, in, in the season. But it'll be very much as you were. You know, we, we, we believe in what we're doing. Um, you know, there's there's two things that need to come from the way we play. Without the ball, obviously, it's a mentality to get the ball back quickly. Yeah, you, you know, all this waving your hands in the air and you know you lose the ball, you give it away, or you try and blame a teammate. We don't do that. I'm not having that. There was a little bit of that yesterday. And the other thing is hard work. You know, you've got to be hard work over 10, 15, 20 yard first. Um, and that's what that's what we're gonna factor in a lot a lot this summer. Do you know what I mean? It's something that's evolved with me as a manager. You know, I like to think I got better. I like to think the staff's got better. Um, you know, and we 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 go with a plan. Um, like I say, there's there's a big disparity in fitness levels between some of the boys. Um, we've got a plan to get them where where we need to be, but they haven't been asked to do anything. Some have, some haven't. While we've been away, but but what I'd say is. If um, if you're behind, it's it's on you to catch up. But what what what, what we've done as well, um, I think we've, we've got we've got 21, 22 players. We had 18 last year. Um, this is, like, the, the new boys, we had 19 last year. No, we had one out long term injury, and then we've got the three new boys coming. Um, so we're we're going to be in a luxury position for um, we've we've got friendly Saturday too because boys haven't played. Um, so so what we're going to do is. We're going to be in a position where we can go 45 minutes um, for the players for these games. We've got the posh game on Tuesday. You know, a bit like Hugo said, like we're trying to build the bridges with these clubs. If they want to play us, I'm not going to say no. But it's a little bit too early for us, you know, um, posh. But we'll, you know, we'll take that a little bit more seriously. We can't just um, be throwing any team out there because you get found out in a bad way. You know, it's happened before to us. Um, so we'll take that a bit more seriously. But the other games, they'll be 45 each. And, you know, these, these are good players. These are first-team players. If players aren't where they need to be, it's on them. That's how I feel this year. It's on you if, you know, like, the sessions we give are hard. Within two hours yesterday, the sessions we do, are, you know, obviously there's a build-up into, into the true pre-season. There has to be. But, um, you know, like, if, if players ain't where they need to be and they're, and they're left behind, it's on them. That's how I feel. It's on them. You're all going to get your 45 minutes. Obviously, over a period of time, <coughs> who have earned the right to have a little bit longer to get into speed, isn't it? But I am, you know, if, if, if people's 
people's miles off some of the other lads. It's, it's, it's on them, do you know what I mean? They're not going to go out and do their own work. Like you say, we didn't do any running yesterday um, at all. It was all intensity work. It was all interval. It, I, when I say interval sessions, like it was hard work. It was probably four minutes on, two minutes off, four minutes on, two minutes off. Short, sharp stuff. Um, you know, like... Our, our sessions are tailored for what, not not just players coming back, but for a team that we want to be, the type of football we want to play. Um, I don't think there's anyone in the league last year who would say we didn't play football, we wouldn't play football, do you know what I mean? Um, but we wasn't organised, everything's where we needed to be in terms of that. Uh, it's just, you know, it's, it's obviously building up to, to the moment and the plan is now get these games out the way, I think it takes us... Uh, probably three, four weeks into pre-season. We'll then go Saturday to Saturday. We'll lose a few players at that point. Um, I've been very open and honest with them. If I wasn't, I wouldn't be saying it on air. We'll probably take it down to 18 and then 18, 19, and then we'll, we'll look to get it down to the 16 that starts the season on the first, on the opening day. Um, going back to what you said, John, I think it's a real fair point about, you know, are we coming back too soon? And I'm, I'm, I'm and what I'm saying here is if there's another spike, how tough is it going to be? Um, I'll, I'll be really intrigued to know what the league's going to do because it would hurt again if we got ourselves up near the top end of the table and then we had it took off us because there was no protocol in place. I mean, when, when you look at it, like I say, we finished top of the league. Um, not on points for games, but we were top. When you look at, look at that, we're, we're the first league that went null and void. It's mm. hard to take. Do you know what I mean? It's hard to take. We can't expect the FA to have something in place for something that's never happened before. But we would like to know the rules this year before we go in. And what happens if there is a spike and we can't finish again? How many games do we have to play before it comes relevant? It uh, kicks in. Like, you know, these, these are the questions that, that, I, that I want to answer. And I wouldn't want to go in. I don't want to go in, like, blind again. Like, you know... Um, once, once something happens, you know, like you can put it down to not knowing a mistake. But if it happens twice, yeah, that's that's incompetence on their part. And as clubs, we we you know, I think that's a really important thing that we need to know um, what happens if this does happen again, John. Jim, Jimmy, what about then if um, you know your first league game, whoever? Let's say you're playing uh, Russell. You mentioned them, okay? In the week leading up to them, one of their players now tests positive for coronavirus mm. and the game's postponed. And they then have to go and, as a group, will have to go and self-isolate, whatever, for seven to 14 days. This could happen at any point in the season. Yeah. And we could have a game, listen, and, and if, you've, if you've played uh, the week before, say you play, let's, let's even go one further, you played Peterborough uh, uh, on Tuesday night, and on Thursday, a Peterborough player tests positive for coronavirus, then you get shut down. Yeah, I, I, I think with that, you know, yeah, um, I think, look, I don't want to say, I don't want to say it's going to annoy people too much, yeah, but the, 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 the way I look at this, yeah, um, I think, I think the way it was all dealt with last time, oh, you know, I was someone who was really badly affected by, by the way, the way the, the, the FA dealt with it, you know. Yeah, I, I get that. Cause they, 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 they give it to clubs to vote for, but most clubs have got no to pay for and don't want to pay the players, you know, it's, yeah. It's, it, it was wrong how they did it, you know. Peter United and us were both both on the end of, you know. For me, I, I think it was a bit of incompetence. I do, you know. I think I think at, at, at that time, and this is bringing me to answer your question, at that time we needed people in charge who were going to be innovators, who were going to find, you know, be creative and, and not just worry about having their, their AGM at, at, the, at the set date in July or September. We've got to be done for them. It was time for people to find find a way around obstacles. Um, now, we understand they panicked, they shut it down. It was easier for them. It wasn't easy for me. It wasn't, it wasn't the easy option. It wasn't, um, it was the easy option. It wasn't the right option, in my opinion. Mm. Now, we know this, we know a bit more about this virus, yeah? We know that 80% of people it gets, I think, I think I read this the other day, don't even know they got it. You know, there's a vulnerable element in society. Yeah. I'm not going into the politics, yeah. I speaking to Steve about it the other day. There's a vulnerable element in society, like in the cow homes, but horribly wrong. So, uh, you know, we, we, we have to keep it away from these people. Um, the first thing, be, to come, coming back to the, the, the people in charge of the league being, you know, innovators and, and, and doing something different, how long does it take to rearrange a friend and have a game called off? 
you're looking at six to eight weeks, I think they give us in our league. You know, you've got to fight for six to eight weeks. Well, yeah. what I'd say, let's have a department for that. If the game gets called off because someone contracts COVID, um, it might be happening at two places at the same time, two teams. Let's just turn that around quickly and say, well, look, you have played, let's get that game in. That would be something I'd like to do. So, you know, you're not, you're not out of football for, you know, a, a, a long a long time, but I also think, right, if we're saying to people now, we've got to be careful. Right? We know we've got to be careful. Like I say, I'm someone who hid in the shower for two months in a, in a, in a house, wouldn't leave, um, you know, shopping, I was getting delivered. I'm someone who's lived on that side of the coin, but look, life has to go on. You know, life has to go on. We can't, we, you, we can't, you know, people want to keep getting paid and stay, stay at home. Like the country, the country can't survive it. And I, I, I don't think that people say it's just sport, but, and it's just football. And of course it is, don't get me wrong, life always comes first. But it's also a context that if football's hit too much by this, we're going to lose something that we love. We're going to lose a lot of teams that we love. And, and, yeah. and, and, and we, we, we have to take all things into consideration here. Life comes first. I'm someone who's been on that side of the coin, but... You know, we, they, these people in charge, the people who are given these important roles, and you know, they, they have to, they're, they're, they're telling us we have to have our risk assessments for our players to protect them, but they have to have risk assessments for clubs and, and well, what happens if there is a kind of impact? You know, like how, how do we get around that without, without shutting down football again? Because um, it's, it's something that I, you know, it hit me hard and I found really frustrating. Um, but, but there has to be a better way to do things like, it can't be that someone gets COVID and we shut down the league, all the league again for two two weeks because he might have met him and he might have met him and he might have met him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, that's that's my opinion. Right? Someone else might say. I mean, I, I don't want to get too much into the you know the death rates and all that, but it's, this isn't. It, we 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 can't let this ruin our country. You know, I think I think where we're going with it now as a country, we're getting back into normality. When it spikes again, there, there has to be a plan in place so we can move forward quickly. Because obviously, look, you look at Spain, Spain's on a lockdown again. This ain't the end of this. This is just something we've got to live with now. Yeah. Yes. The, 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 the COVID, and they're, they're going about vaccines. You know, there's been six COVID viruses before. They've never had a vaccine before for them. They're saying they're going to have one now. Uh, if they get it, it's going to take years. This is something we have to live with, live with now. Like, how far do we want to let this go? Do we want to let this finishes off as a society, like, are we going to be that snowflake generation? You've got some generations that go through wars and, you know, they come out and they smile at the end of it. Is, is there an element of us that can do that? Or, or are we just going to go in our shells and hide away? Like, I know that's gone a little bit political, but I think it applies to football as well, boys. You know, we have, we have to find a way to move forward. And I'd say that if I was at the bottom of the league or if I was at the top of the league, and, you know, and I mean it when I say it. Um, you might think differently to me. Like I said, I don't want to wind anyone up with what I've said. But I'm asked, I was asked the question. That's my view, to be honest with you. Blair with John, with a, yeah, you jumped in. I mean, earlier, John, you sort of mentioned that, yeah, there's that uncertainty. We're kind of jumping on towards when the matches start again. But obviously, you've been given guidelines in terms of where you need to be to start the matches. As Jimmy says, that's kind of on where you are in terms of looking after your players and making sure your clubs are safe places. But is there there, as Jimmy's alluding to, is there enough there to make you feel secure that once we start the season, you know, there's a pathway where, you know, this season's going to have some meaning no matter what the future holds? Yeah, I, I think if you're going to start something, uh, and I agree with Jimmy on this, I think if we're, if we're going to start September 19th, I think there's got to be set plans in place for all eventualities. Now, this time... Last year, you know, we were all preparing for a season, 2019-20 season. And then you fast forward eight months in March. And so nobody expected what was coming. No one's seen it. So there was nothing in place. Um, now, you know, we were, we were probably going to finish mid-table, 10th, 11th. Um, but I feel for, for clubs like Peterborough, South Shields in our division. South Shields were, were 12 points clear at the top. South Shields were getting 1,500 fans through the gate for home games. South Shields beat us 5-2 up there. And, um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm as competitive as they come. And um, I love watching them play. I think they're, they're, they're a great club. And, um, you know, 
if they were going to do a points per game basis for the national conference, the EFL, I don't see why they couldn't have done it for us. It was lack of consistency, us. really, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And it I, the I, same I, for everyone. And the playoffs as well, you know, like the playoffs are yeah. the league. Above. Why can't? And yeah, sorts itself out because at step five, there's no, there's no playoff system to do no. this three, four, finish it as it, it start, finish what you started before you worry about. Like yeah. you just said, John, before you worry about the next stage, mate. Go on, yeah, start. there should have, there should have been, there should like I can only talk about my division. So, so, so it should have been South Shields up. If you're going to do it on a points per game basis, they were by far the best team, and and they were. There were nine points clear with, I don't know, I said 10 games left. Um, and then just, just do everybody else in a points per game. Because if you're the worst team in the league and it's March, you know, you've only got six weeks to go, then you're probably the worst team in the league. So there should have been, and I feel for the teams in the division below us, because mm-hmm. the division below us up to the Prem, you know, that's a big achievement to get promoted to the, to the Premier yeah. and a big, big achievement to go into the Conference North and Conference South. Um, now, I, I, it was April, May time and I took my dog for a walk in the park and there's a group of lads playing 11 v 11. You know, just, just put the nets up in the park and so like Jimmy says, why, you know, why couldn't Peterborough or, or, or South Shields or FC United in Manchester or, or all the, whoever, you know, why couldn't there be a playoff semi-final and a playoff final uh, uh, neutral ground or whatever, like the EFL have done, yeah. like you know Harrogate Town, um, you know played yesterday, got to Wembley. Um, you know our our league. I remember being out for a walk two weeks into to lockdown, and I got an email from my chairman saying, "John, the league's done." I know, yeah. wow, that was that was quick. Um, it's too quick, man. Yeah, and yeah, I, it's the same. They shut my league. They did the same with mine. In my division, um, the top team was Worthing. Yeah. And uh, do you know what? I'll be honest with you. When they when they came to play us uh, at our place on the on the Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, whenever it was, they were that good that I found myself applauding them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I just couldn't. I I could. I'd pay to watch them. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'll tell you another thing about it. As well. deserve to go up. Yeah. I, I'll tell you another thing that rankles with me as well. Like, um, you know, a, a lot of a lot of the big hitters in our league last year maybe didn't get it right. You know, maybe they didn't get it right. We got it right. We, you know, we was at the top of what we could do. I don't think they did. Um, you know, they couldn't have done. When when you look at the size of the club and the size of money, we, this, we could be exactly the same this year. We could be exactly the same level. They spend their money better. They spend the thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds. They've got, they've got better. And through no fault of our own, we've been robbed yeah. of an opportunity we earned. Um, you know, like like I say, it's, it's 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 annoying, but I also accept it. You know, I accept it because it was something that had never happened before, something we never expected. Yeah. Um. But this year, you know, I wouldn't. You know, if we could overachieve or we could do something like that again, or if any other club, I wouldn't want any other club to be in the situation we was in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um. That, that, which is why I think there has to be. There has to be a, a, a protocol in place. I mean, I know they say with these uh, semi-finals of these competitions, like that, that there's a lot of money being paid for testing. But we're we're an FA league. Um, we ain't we ain't local football. And and you look at it. Surely that's what the FA's funding is in place for. Why couldn't they do the testing? Why couldn't they make sure we were safe to play these games? Why did that have to go bang snap uh, snapping it's over? I, you know like. I, I just hope this year that they're, 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 this year we know every eventuality regarding coronavirus. We know everything that could happen. Hopefully lots of it won't. But when the coulds do happen, there needs to be a plan in place. There needs to be this year because you can't, you know, like, it's, and I, another thing that, I mean, there's, there's, there, there'll be clubs, if I just think about it, there'll be clubs in our league, I'd imagine that would be around budgets of three hundred thousand pounds, you know, two fifty, three hundred thousand pounds, maybe even more, the seasonal mm. budget. You know, like what are they saying that money's worth nothing. They they saying these clubs are investing, I mean obviously we're nowhere near being one of them, but they're saying that this this money's just expendable. Um these clubs didn't care because they hadn't achieved what they wanted to achieve. But if they was at the top like South Shields were, um I'm sure they would have kicked up more of a fuss and used their funding to do it. We weren't in a situation where we could do it. Um, but like South Shields have made a massive investment 
this yeah. year. Um, you know, for us, we are. <laughs> but our, you know, like compared to them, it's it's, it's mini school. So they've they've made a massive impact <laughs> to get where they want. And then just like that, someone's gone like that. Literally, clipped their fingers, made a decision. Um, you know, it's one of them where we know what we're doing. He was walking a dog. I was, I was shocked because they're just telling them that money means nothing. It's worthless. You know what? There was there's a team in the national league. The manager's a very good friend of mine, and they were just outside the playoffs. All right, and you know their budget was, I think, was close to a million pounds, and bang, shut down. Well, that's so, it. I mean, that's someone's money, mate. That's fans' money, and it's just been real. Yeah. Now, but I, I, I know, I understand that what we went through was a one. You know, it's, it was a once. Oh, I hope it was a once in a lifetime thing. It's something that no one could be ready for. So we accept that. I'm saying we accept that. We accept. You know, we had to. We had, we accept the flick of the thing. We accept to shut down. But what I'm saying is, this year, looking forward, we really don't want to be in that position again. Mm. If there is a spike or is there a long-term spike. Spain's being shut down again. Um, Korea got shut down again. It's, it's, it, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's inevitable, but there's a good chance this could happen, isn't there? There's a good chance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Get this. We need but to play this time. But you, I think what stage does the does the season then become valid? How many how many well, games? How this, many weeks this, this is what I said. There's got to be a point you get to where you kick in. There's got to be. It can't be six games in, can it? You know, you can't do the season on six games. But you know, after after January time. You know, you've played a lot of football then, do you know what I mean? And it's not about, at that point for me, it's not about where teams would have got to. Would you have won the league, Jimmy? Would you have got in the playoffs, Jimmy? But what this is about is having some meaning to what we have done. You know, like, we don't know the answer, would we have won the league? We, we'll never know the answer. Is it fair? Of course it's not. Of course it's not. But, you know, like, we can't, the, the, if we can't go into a season, for me, I don't want to go into a season knowing that if I play till February again or I play till January again, there's a chance that it could mean nothing. You know, I don't care if that meant relegation, I don't care if that meant promotion, I don't care if that meant 12th place, yeah? I want, I want to be judged at some point on, on what we've done. Mm. And I, think that's, I think that's fair enough. Yeah, no, one, no one's going to stick their head above the parapet and say, what, at least played everyone once? Or like I say, you've set it at a date, if we get to January, anything after this... Yeah, right, this season is valid and you're, you're judged on points per game is the fairest way or? Listen, what, how I put this year, like, no one cares if they know the rules when they start. If you know the rules when you start, this is why you went the points per game and the two top teams, the two highest teams went up, but you had a playoff system. That's not fair. You know, the team, you, if that's how you do it, you do it like the National League's done it. The top team goes up, then you play the playoffs. You find a way. You could play them as pre-season friendlies. Is it ideal? Of course it's not. The, you know, the teams that have been working harder and the fit are more likely to win. Um, the teams that have abided by the social distancing rules are likely to lose. You know, like, I, I understand that. But the, the, if everyone knows the date, if everyone knows the, the system that's in place, everyone knows the rules, you can't argue. Yeah. You can't argue with it. It's when, the, it's when the goalposts get moved. That's when there's a big issue. Yeah. I think all, yeah. We, all we ask for is just uh, some protocol in place. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, I think a bit of consistency as well because if, like Jimmy said, and like we're we're all we're all FA affiliated clubs, so you know, so is the national conference, so is the EFLs, you know, so is the Premier League. So what? Why? Why is it different rules for us and they, different rules for everybody they, else? Because they class us. They don't class us as elite, but they've 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 uh, they've classed the yeah, national but, leagues but who, as elite. But, I know. If if we're to go, then you got to go back to. I agree with you, by the way. So you know, yeah, like both yes, of you. Yes. So someone. So so we're all on a pathway to try and get our our clubs promoted to, yeah. to the elite. So yeah, you know that it's it's like they're elite. Yeah, but you know what? This year we're not going to let anybody come into our, our elite level. But so. Yeah. John, we're saying elite, yeah. Is is the National League North and South elite and step three? Be, no, it's not. But it's no, been. Yeah. But they've classed it as yeah. they, they've classed it as that in order to play the playoffs. Yeah. You know, yeah. The FA, look, we all love football. No matter how good you are at it, the FA, the FA is not just there for Liverpool and Man United. It's there for grassroots. It's there for all football. One hundred percent. Agree. And are you know, telling me that South Shields are a smaller club than many teams in the National League? And, 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 oh, and, and what exactly. I'm saying here, in my opinion, is if if 
there's there's so much money in, in the top level <clears> of the game, or there's so much money in the FA and they can send I mean this I mean the FA do, do a lot for grassroots. They have a lot of these teams fund to do the stadiums so they can go up the leagues. But I've seen it firsthand. If that money's there, you know, if there's testing required at our level for uh, for a playoff system, you know, to make yeah. sure it's safe, like Boston and that are having to do I think Boston are having to pay their own their own testing at, at step two. That's not yeah. fair. Oh, they're a big club. They're a massive club. Yeah, that's, not, yeah. that's what the FA should be there for, to support yeah. in these times of turmoil. Do you know what I mean? Do you know, do you know how much money's in the Premier League bank account? Go on. A lot. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Like, like millions. Bit, like, I think there's even yeah. a bit, there's that's so right. much money in there. Got, just... got, for, me, for me, that's not of interest. Like, you know, I don't yeah, care but, it, it could, but isn't that then, can't that, these, the, the elite help those of us that are classed not as elite in terms of, well, can't, it costs, listen, it's not cheap to, to, to test players, right? So can't they help then to test our players? Because the money's there, higher up the game that just sits there, that's not yeah. even being used. Why, yeah. this, might, this is the whole thing. Why can't, why are we suffering when we don't have to? Why, think, mm. What I mean by that is that things could be made a lot, easier for us at our level of football and below right if if there was a bit more help yeah, yeah higher up you look at teams in the EFL that you know Crawley's your Gillingham's people like that you know I know I'm talking about southern clubs because I'm southern based you know they've you know they they even they're suffering because they're being having to run smaller squads and, and gonna yeah. have to promote youth more but even they need help but the money yeah. there right at the top of the game to yeah. help everybody below. So why that's just my point is then oh, wouldn't yes, you exactly. feel better if you were able to test your players every week? Hey guys, that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, you know, when you use you use the word protocol, I mean that sums it up. There's got to be something in place here. Yeah? Right. But the protocol has to include them helping us. It has to. You you know you can't tell me of course. you can't tell me step two you know, it's not against it. If, you know, it is a is elite football, and you know, we're not. You know, like it's, I know there has to be a line, but if you're saying semi professional football goes down to step six, they should cover it down to step six. Do you know what I mean? I agree. They, 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 you know, they, they, there ain't playoffs down them levels. There's not playoffs at step five or six. So points per game works there anyway. It's only step three and four and one and two where the playoffs come in. Do you see what I mean? Let's, yeah. let, let's be honest, right? In step two. Majority of clubs are the same as us. They trade Tuesday night, Thursday night. Yes. Yeah. There's a, obviously there are a few that are four months. Big clubs in there. But yeah. yeah but this, there aren't many, like in the, in the Conference National League South, I think there's three teams that are full time. Mm. Everybody else is same mm. as us, Tuesday, Thursday. So are they any more, are Dartford any more elite than Lewis? I would, I would put, um, I would put my hat on um, a team like Soul Shields. Um, if you could magically click your fingers and put them in the national conference with their fan base, with how the chairman runs the yeah, club, well. Graham Fenton is the manager, great, great guy, good coach. They play good football. Yeah. Um, and not only are they a good football inside, what they do in the community is like unbelievable. Right. And they're a great example for, for us. So, so me and my chairman, we, you know, we go and pick their brains as, as what to do. So they, they are an elite team in everything but the fact that they're playing in, in the Northern Premier League. So, um, yeah, I, I, I agree with you boys. I think this year, at our level, it should have been points per game, right, you're up, points per game, next four for playoffs, and then have your... Because it doesn't... doesn't it, it eradicates this conversation that we're having now. Yeah. Mate, mate, you talk about it. Like, we, in, in, at our level last year, I mean, they've got a great manager in Ian Culverhouse. Kings in, they, they they didn't win our league. They come, they, they went up through the the playoffs and they yeah. beat the team from your your league, John. They, they beat Warrington, yeah. Yeah, they beat Warrington. They've gone up and won that league. Yeah, they? they've yeah. gone up and won that league with the same core of players. Yeah, yeah, they they did, listen, they did well. Listen, a great manager, a great manager. Yeah. Oh, you know, I can't take that away from the man. A great, great manager. Minimal changes to the squad, same players. They've gone up and won the league above after not winning the league below. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I'm not saying anyone can do that. I'm just saying it's. You ain't gonna tell me that's elite and there's a big difference. So you can't, you can't Agreed. do this. You know what I mean? We've played four step, two sides. Um, 
since I've been manager, one of them was at step four. So, yeah, two of them was at step four. We played Chorley when they won the All-League. John, great team. Too much for us beat three now. We beat Boston United in the round before in the FA Cup, two 0 away. We beat Guysley from step two last year, uh, at home one 0 and then we lost away in the trophy to um, this is all FA competitions away to Kettering. We've, we've won two, lost two, do you know what I mean? Since yeah, yeah. Before. Like for me, the protocol, you can't go halfway down the long non league with the top two leagues in non league and leave that the bottom four leagues. Yeah. We do the whole pro, the, pre, the the professional leagues, one one to four. I know it's the Premier League Championship now. Yeah, that, that's that's covered. It's set in. Like you can't yeah. have you can't have half of that doing different to the top half. This is all the professional game or none of the professional game, and it's all a grassroots non league. Or yeah. it's not grassroots non league. You can't pick and choose the, the leagues that are that that have more relevance to what you want to do. Yeah, or, you know, like you, you have a protocol in place and it's consistent. That word, John. It's consistent for yeah. all of the league and all of f- football, professional football. Yeah. You know, or or it's, it's not right. Yeah, agreed, Matt. I think we all agreed on that. Yeah. 